All right. Uh, the break has now ended, and I want to thank you to everyone for joining us today. My name is Liz Williams, and I'll be introducing our keynote speaker tonight. I'll remind you this session will be recorded and that we ask that you hold any questions until the speaker has finished his talk. I'm very pleased to invite David Rios Insua to the stage. David is research professor at the Instituto de Ciencias Matemáticas in Spain and is a member of the Spanish Royal Academy of Sciences. He is also the AXA ICMAT Chair in Adversarial Risk Analysis and Professor of Statistics and Operations Research at the Complutense University. He has a broad range of research interests and his approach to research stems from real complex systems in decision-making, which lead to methodological innovations that often become new systems for supporting the decision-making process. He joins us today with a talk entitled Views on the Security of Machine Learning Algorithms. Welcome, David, and thank you so much for joining us today. So thank you, Liz, for the invitation and thank you, everybody. Uh, I should say good morning, good night, and good afternoon. Uh, for me, it's afternoon at the moment. Um, I'm, I'm very pleased to, to, to give this uh, brief talk. Um, so when I'm up, I, after be, uh, giving a brief introduction to um, some ideas on machine learning, and we, we've, we've seen quite many examples in the, in the conference already, um, my, my focus will be on, on the need to uh, deal with uh, security within those uh, machine learning systems. And part of it is, um, well, it's, it's a sort of natural question to ask, uh, but as uh, um, um, Lisa just said, uh, there's a very interesting um, piece of uh, policy that is being discussed at the moment in, 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 in Europe, which is called the Artificial Intelligence Act. And it's nice to, to find that uh, it, it's actually discussing in quite uh, um, interesting depth, uh, these concepts of security and machine learning. So that's a sort of good time for, for this kind of research. Uh, then I'll, I'll give a sort of uh, brief uh, overview on, on, on perspectives on uh, the current research, the sort of core problems that are being dealt with in adversarial machine learning which would be the sort of uh, name for secure, uh, robustifying or securitizing uh, machine learning algorithms. Um, and based on, on that kind of uh, brief, brief uh, overview, I will try to uh, present also briefly the approaches, the alternative approaches or the alternative paradigm that we are trying to promote for the reasons that I will try to explain. Uh, and, to, and, and I will end up with some discussion and some challenges some open problems that uh, we need to, we are facing. Okay, so uh, machine learning is uh, refers, there's uh, various descriptions, but one is uh, refers to computer programs that learn from experience with respect to a certain task and, uh, um, and take into account a performance measure. And there's been many outstanding successes. So we have had uh, uh, several examples or many examples in this, in this conference of, of the, in relation with this. Of, or successful applications uh, in, in various domains of, of these kind of algorithms. I'm just put here uh, three that uh, we, we've done in, in or we are working on in, in, in our lab. Uh, the first and the third refer to making much more efficient, uh, uh, more economical, more less, uh, less um, uh, polluting uh, processes which refer to Developing uh, a new additives for 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 um, uh, chemical products, and this refers to uh, generating new molecules for with a certain purpose, chemical purpose or uh, industrial purpose. Uh, and the second and the third one is refers to for the, is the same the same uh, kind of thing is uh, developing new molecules that will be used in uh, in, in for drugs, right? Uh, the idea is that the, those processes then. Uh, I mean, the, the traditional way is uh, very time consuming, uh, uh, very resource consuming. Uh, and through these kind of algorithms, we are able to speed up uh, considerably the, the, the process. And the second, uh, and the, the second one uh, that, uh, that has been mentioned already in the, in the, in the conference 
uh, refers to automated driving systems and in particular developing uh, decision support algorithms uh, in this in this domain that we have been doing in in, in one project okay so with these accesses uh, uh, a lot of people is uh, well there's a there's a this is very trendy and uh, both in research and, and, in, and in applications uh, but with this uh, there's also a reflection and this this uh, conference might be a, a very good example a reflection on the properties on of uh, of uh, these algorithms right um, and I put a, a few of them uh, there's many more uh, my focus will be on uh, the, my my major focus will be on on the security of those algorithms and also related what is called the robustness of of, of those algorithms but uh, we've seen other other talks on i mean talking on inter interpretability fairness and, and so on okay so um uh, machine learning meets security uh, the traditional assumption that uh, um, um, affects or applies to uh, many uh, machine learning approaches refers to, I mean, the, 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 the hypothesis is that data uh, in during training and during operations are uh, generated from the same distribution. But uh, when we deploy these uh, uh, systems, that could be, uh, it could be the, the case that this, this is not, this is not true, uh, and this is this could be not true uh, for various reasons. But one important is the the need to um, uh, the possibility of of those systems being attacked by by um, uh, bad guys who want to get some kind of benefit. I'm putting uh, there uh, uh, an example, a uh, sort of easy to run example uh, that's uh, on image recognition. Uh, the example that we consider uh, there is uh, recognizing uh, uh, handwritten uh, handwritten uh, numbers, handwritten uh, digits, digits, um, and with a relatively simple model, um, uh, we can build um, um, we can build um, 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 uh, networks that recognize those digits digits uh, with a very high accuracy. In, in this example, we were able to get a 99% of accuracy, which is uh, uh, far beyond what uh, uh, many humans can do. But uh, we can actually attack the data and the, 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 the row, the, the second row are uh, attacked uh, images. Uh, you can appreciate, you may be appreciate that some of the pixels are gray, etc. right? So. Um, you can see that, um, um, at least for my eyes and probably for in, in general for the human eye, um, the same we would recognize a zero, a one, a two, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But you can see below uh, with the same algorithm that I mentioned before that we trained before and was performing so nicely. Those attack data, you can you can see that uh, it may, it's making mistakes. For example, the one on the bottom. Uh, uh, on the bottom row on the right is recognized as a four, whereas uh, above it was a nine. Actually, the performance degrades a lot. It, it goes, it, it, it moves uh, from 99% to 62%. Uh, so you may think, uh, so what? Uh, but um, it happens that uh, these kind of algorithms are, for example, uh, introduced in, in, are used in cars, in automated driving systems. Uh, uh, the, the car should uh, recognize uh, Whatever is uh, uh, whatever is important in the uh, in the um, driving scene in a, in a driving scene, and you, you have uh, there an example uh, in the in the um, uh, top row. You, you I mean the, the, that would be the driving scene, and the car uh, functioning normally it would uh, recognize people, and therefore it should stop. Uh, the row be, uh, uh, be, uh, the row below the the image uh, uh, on uh, bottom left is uh, the same image but uh, slightly perturbated uh, uh, to uh, to our eyes we st we are still uh, viewing uh, persons but uh, the recognition system uh, i mean suddenly because of this attack uh, the persons disappear or evaporate from the image and where the car where where the car should stop it, it could actually go ahead and with potentially catastrophic consequences. So that's a, that's a problem. 
this is another example uh, of the potential uh, performance degradation, uh, just to show uh, uh, that uh, this affects a variety of, of algorithms, of machine learning algorithms. Or, yeah. So uh, this is uh, an example of um, uh, span detection. So that's an example of one of society, which are uh, 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 content filters, right? One example, as I say, would be spam spam detection. So you can see that uh, for algorithms which perform with untainted untainted, untainted data, uh, perform uh, uh, pretty well uh, with uh, pretty high accuracies, ninety four percent, etc. Uh, but uh, if we attack with uh, in a certain way, which is uh, one one good word intention, so just adding one good good word to the to the uh, AM to the emails that uh, we were dealing with, uh, we were able to um, fool uh, those algorithms and, and reduce the performance uh, quite considerably. Okay, so uh, the bottom line is that uh, artificial intelligence machine learning systems may be attacked, and numer numerous societal systems are already uh, vulnerable. I mentioned content filters, uh, uh, autonomous cars, but also military systems law enforcement systems and so on. So now um, uh, that this has expanded um, um, uh, a, new, a new field of research, which is called other cell machine learning, but uh, quite interestingly, from the point of view of policy or, 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 or laws, uh, it has steered um, uh, in part uh, a, a, a law which is quite important at the moment in, 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 in Europe and is being discussed at the moment, which is the Artificial Intelligence Act. Uh, so, in a sort of uh, um, maybe a bit presumptuous way, but we could say that this is the European approach to artificial intelligence, much as we, the European Union, tried to lead the data protection through the, with, through the GDPR, which has been copied now in, 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 in a few countries. Uh, but uh, these are sort of the sort of uh, keywords that uh, are of interest in this uh, act, which is quite of inter uh, interesting. Uh, are of interest uh, from the perspective of this talk, which is they talk, for example, of high risk artificial intelligence systems, and they mention as keywords things like robustness, resilience, risk based assessment, safe and uh, safe and respect fundamental rights, uh, secure, trustworthy, and ethical AI, and there's also uh, a nice concept, which is the AI regulatory sandboxes. I mentioned here like three or four uh, points, which are bullet points from from the from the act. Uh, from the act, uh, for example, uh, they say that those high risk AI systems should uh, perform consistently and, and uh, meet an appropriate level of accuracy, robustness, and cybersecurity, in a, in accordance to uh, the generally acknowledged state of the art. Uh, technical robustness is mentioned as a key uh, requirement, and this means that uh, there should be resilience against risks in the sense of uh, safety, but also in the sense of security. So it should be resilient against uh, malicious actions that uh, may compromise the security of the artificial intelligence. And it is said that uh, these kind of things may, may block or may affect uh, uh, fundamental rights. Cybersecurity is also mentioned, and for example, uh, from from the point of view of this talk, uh, this talk, sorry, uh, uh, cyber attacks against AI systems can leverage uh, certain assets, uh, such as training uh, data sets or train models, or exploit vulnerabilities of the infrastructure. So that, that you can see that this is quite important uh, in within the within the uh, current discussion policies discussions concerning socially responsible algorithms in a, in a and finally, this is quite important also for the kind of research that we try to do is uh, there's uh, artificial intelligence regulatory sandboxes that provide control environments that facilitate the development, testing, and validation of innovative AS. So the idea is, uh, well, we are going to put some constraints, but we, um, we want to also uh, promote an innovative ecosystem for, for this in Europe. Okay. So that's the, the policy, uh, the policy uh, around these ideas. And let me briefly uh, mention uh, the core concepts or research concepts in this area. 
first of all, a, a very brief uh, a guided tour in like uh, the history of in, in one slide. So from my point of view, everything starts with uh, the, the work on Dalby et al. Uh, that I shall briefly describe in a minute. Uh, and then there's already books, review papers, and from the policy point of view, uh, there's things like, uh, as I mentioned, the Artificial Intelligence Act, but also documents, for example, there's an ISTA standard on, on trying to sort of um, uh, settle uh, terminology in this area, which is quite new. And, and policy uh, documents like, for example, Commuter or, or for Trend. And I, 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 the sort of bottom line of all these history is that uh, uh, the sort of core concepts, uh, the core concepts in this uh, area are uh, game theoretic uh, with uh, com common knowledge assumptions that I, I shall uh, describe in a minute. And also, there's a very important uh, um, um, uh, trend or scientific. Uh, pillar, which is uh, a robust statistics in the classical sense. So there's three three uh, core topics in this area. So uh, um, a lot of researchers are uh, devising, designing attacks to learning systems. That's, that would be the first one. Uh, given the attacks, uh, uh, there's lots of researchers with, who try to uh, de uh, deploy or design uh, defenses, right? Methodologies for defense. And finally, the third, the third topic, the third topic or third would be more like more encompassing and trying to develop frameworks or pipelines that take into account this kind of uh, fight uh, or war or cyber war between atta attackers and defenders in this domain of, of uh, machine learning. There's, um, as I said, there's many examples. The, 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 the sort of most uh, popular, uh, and it has appeared in many domains, many areas in the, in the press, etc., are adversarial examples. And the, the case uh, that I gave a, a minute ago on, on recognizing digits, digits uh, refers to adversarial examples. So basically, it's, uh, we have uh, an, an original image, some kind of, uh, well, what is called an adversarial noise, which is some noise which apparently has no a specific pattern, but it's, re it's chosen uh, uh, on purpose to try to fool, uh, for example, a classification system. Uh, in this case, um, um, there, this is a sort of uh, image, uh, a medical image. Um, 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 the original one is classified as benign uh, by the, 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 the classifier, but if we add uh, uh, this noise, uh, uh, um, and, and we get with this adversarial example such a image, which uh, probably to the human eye is, is almost similar, uh, is classified as mal malignant by by the, the classifier. So there's many. Uh, this is just, uh, and for example, this is based on on a method called the fa uh, fast gradient uh, uh, gradient uh, sign method, uh, which requires you to know what is the loss function being used by the classifier. Uh, but there's many other, many other. So as I said, this is a whole domain so, or subdomain uh, uh, which is developing uh, attacks. The other, uh, the second, the second uh, subdomain is called are called or uh, well, developing defenses. And there's uh, uh, by now a few general strategies. The most uh, famous one is uh, adversarial training, which basically is uh, train uh, a model using attack samples. And uh, the, uh, the attack samples are, are based on, I mean, are chosen in, in, a, in a specific way, in a sort of what is the worst, uh, what, what is the worst perturbation that would affect uh, uh, our uh, machine learning algorithm. Uh, and you can see that it leads to um, what, what, what we call in, in, what is called in game theory uh, by level or in, in operations research uh, by level, some by level algorithms. Like uh, like AT, like other uh, sheltering, there's other other important uh, uh, algorithms like, uh, for example, other serial logit pairing and so on. And the final uh, uh, the final uh, topic is our frameworks would be frameworks, and I would uh, explain it uh, through the sort of pioneering work of in other serial classification. So you can see that uh, you can see that uh, this as a competition or as a game between a classifier uh, and a machine learning system and an adversary, which could be also a, 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 an AI system. Um, uh, there's two classes, malicious and in, innocent, spam, non-spam, or uh, 
um, um, uh, malignant images and, and be, uh, benign images, etc. Uh, now, if you treat this in a in a in sort of all all its generality, this is a, this is a very complex problem. Uh, you cannot you cannot solve it uh, actually. Uh, and and the idea in uh, the sort of nice idea from Dalby et al. Uh, when they introduced this adversarial classification uh, scheme was to uh, first uh, um, allow the uh, classifier to operate with, uh, assume that it's operating with clean data and find the optimal classifier. Then the adversary who knows uh, this optimal classifier finds the optimal at attack against such uh, such uh, classifier uh, and then the classifier, et cetera, et cetera, okay? So you can see that this is, a, uh, we could say that this is a forward, uh, it's a myopic, forward myopic approach, but it's it, on one hand, but it's also quite important to uh, mention that uh, it's um, it's being implemented under what we could call a strong common knowledge, because the uh, the the attacker knows a lot of inform information from the classifier, and the classifier knows a lot of information from the from the attacker, which is uh, not always. Uh, there's simpler, there's weaker versions, uh, but um, um, common knowledge is, is, is all over this. So uh, to sum up, uh, um, everything is now adversarial. So you name your, because it's a, a pretty important topic at the moment. So you name your uh, favorite machine learning or, or favorite statistical approach and somebody will, will have provide uh, uh, an adversarial version. So there's adversarial SVMs, adversarial attacks to ARIMA models, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, mostly from the game theory, uh, from a game theoretic perspective, uh, we, uh, and this requires uh, common knowledge, which is too common, as, uh, uh, too common, commonly as assumed. And uh, what we would like to stress is that there's much more uncertainty, and we would like to acknowledge that there's more, uh, more uncertainty. So the attacker doesn't know so much about the defender, and the defender doesn't know so much about the attacker, and that's that needs to be modeled somehow. And this will be this will. And motivate uh, this will motivate the, the kind of research that we we try to do. Uh, it's a difficult area because uh, there's a sort of permanent competition between uh, attackers and defenders, and it's very relevant uh, as I mentioned before from an applied po point of view, just to name uh, national security and cybersecurity uh, issues that uh, we mentioned. And I, I would it, it should it's it's fair to mention this uh, clever hands library. Uh, it could be like a sort of pre uh, one of these AI regulatory sandbox sandboxes that I mentioned that the uh, Artificial Intelligence Act wants to promote. So, I mean, based on that, we, you could build these this kind of uh, sandboxes. Okay, so uh, given this situation, the, the, uh, let me briefly, very briefly explain the work we try to do. Uh, I mean, the sort of approach that we try to promote. Um, uh, sort of a uh, sort of very basic uh, discussion is that we are trying to move from uh, the concept from risk analysis to adversarial risk analysis to the domain of machine learning. So uh, in the sort of top row, you, you have typical examples associated with risk analysis. So, so these are uh, um, uh, threats that materialize, but with uh, uh, due to um, Let's say exogenous um, exogenous uh, sources. Uh, and, uh, in the in the in the bottom row, you can see uh, threats that are due to uh, intelligent uh, adaptive uh, adaptive uh, 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 adversaries, uh, and and that's the kind of uh, context that we want to. Uh, so uh, the uh, the ideas that we try to develop, uh, we've been trying to develop uh, for counterterrorism and so on. Uh, we try to 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 extend them to to this context of uh, machine learning or, or or adversary adversary machine learning. By the way, in in the in the field of uh, artificial intelligence, the top row <coughs> would uh, correspond would correspond to uh, um, what is called safe artificial intelligence. <coughs> sorry, and the bottom row would correspond to secure artificial intelligence. And if you remember from the uh, little um, sentences that I uh, uh, took from the AI Act, uh, both SafeAI and Secure AI are, are included in the in the Artificial Intelligence Act. So um, uh, what we did in ARA um, 
can be seen as a sort of alternative or complement to to uh, yeah uh, um, uh, alternative to game theory. Uh, they provide different solutions, uh, um, um, so it's it's a different approach. Uh, uh, very briefly, um, so that would be a like a, a, a sort of a standard uh, a, a problem in classification, uh, right? So uh, a guy needs to or a system needs to classify based on some data, and it gets a and here is the extension that we have take into, into account that there's a, an adversary, an attacker. Uh, so uh, what we get is not the sort of uh, um, original instances, but perturbated instances, uh, which uh, uh, with the purpose of fooling us in, in classification. Okay, so what we need to do is, is uh, uh, um, what we do is co consider the sort of a, a, um, a classification problem taking into account that we, are, we might be uh, attacked and the problem is that uh, we have uncertainty on how we are being attacked. Okay, so you can see here that rather than the original data X, we are receiving X prime, which is uh, perturbated. And the thing is, everything is an effort, <clears throat> an effort to try to forecast how are we uh, given given that we receive some data, uh, are we being attacked, and how are we being attacked, uh, and and all, everything is try to forecast the, the, those kind. Of we have uh, met methods, etc. but we don't have time, okay, basically uh, algorithms. Just le le let me show you that, uh, remember the, this, uh, uh, the, the performance that uh, was degraded with the uh, spam de uh, detector. Uh, we can see uh, with, uh, with, our, uh, with our algorithms that we can, recover, uh, we can recover quite a lot the performance. And that would be in image, uh, you, you, you can compare with this, uh, these are the uh, again the uh, accuracy of, of that we we get with our classifiers in in, in a more uh, intensive uh, uh, task referring to to vision. Uh, you can see that the algorithms that we introduce uh, this is ARA, right? For example, it, uh, they they are they they perform better than uh, for example uh, adversarial training. So uh, this is uh, promising. This is a promising approach. Okay. So uh, to sum up, uh, basically we have talked about uh, uh, traditionally uh, traditional statistical machine learning risk analysis per, 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 perturbated by adversaries. Uh, traditionally, it's been uh, it's been dealt with uh, game theoretic uh, with a sort of standard game theoretic perspective with uh, very strong common knowledge assumptions, which we feel are not relevant in security domains. And what we try to is. Uh, provide alternative approaches uh, in this domain to mitigate uh, uh, th those common knowledge uh, assumptions. Uh, there's many there's many problems that uh, we are just studying. So I, I mentioned uh, let me mention attacker models. We could build a uh, we would need to build as um, what we could call an statistical decision theory and try to, uh, to talk about adversarial point estimation, etc. Um, we, um, I mean, the, the, the algorithms that we have are uh, very intensive computationally for the moment. So we need to work a lot on, on, on efficient computational schemes. And, uh, and again, we have like ad hoc solutions uh, and we, we would need to develop, a, or we are, we are working on developing a computational environment in the line of these uh, regulatory sandboxes that uh, I mentioned before. And there's many examples. I, we, we've seen a few of them, but fake news, malware detection, et cetera, are also <clears throat> relevant examples. A few references uh, and uh, a few of the sponsors uh, of this research. Uh, so we have uh, we are having projects on um, automated driving systems, uh, trust in automated driving systems, uh, support of uh, artificial intelligence tools for law enforcement agencies, uh, we have some projects, uh, of course, in, in, in defense, uh, in banking and insurance, which are uh, interested in, in, this kind, in this kind of, of, uh, of research. And thank you again. Um, so uh, we have, um, I mean, there's so many problems in this area, uh, open problems that uh, we would be uh, very happy if somebody uh, joins the effort. So, so that's my, these are my email. This is my email and we would be happy to to collaborate in, the, in this, uh, there's so many things to do. So thank you again to, to Lisa and the organizers.
and I hope the next time it can, can be that in physically in Australia. <clears throat> Thank you very much, David. Yeah, uh, well, I hope next time it'll be <laughs> physically in the same location. <laughs> that would be nice. Um, thank you for the wonderful talk. I'd now like to open up the floor for questions. So um, if you could please use the raise hand gesture on Zoom, I'll call you, you in order. Um, if you don't wish to be in the recording, feel free to share your questions in the chat and we'll keep an eye out for those. Okay, I see. So Fred, I think you're first. So David, very nice talk. Thank you. Uh, uh, I was wondering the extent to which the resources available to an attacker or a defender enter into the whole analysis. So, okay. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, um, remember, I, I mentioned the. Uh, I, I didn't have much time, but I mentioned attackers uh, attacks. Um, attacks um, um, defenses and frame and pipelines of, of pipelines. So the pipeline that we try to develop, uh, the first uh, one of the first st uh, stages is uh, trying to think about the uh, uh, the capabilities of the attackers, the resources of the attackers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that uh, I mean, you, 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 this allows you to put some constraints on the types of, of attacks that you should expect and the sort of develop the uncertainty models that you have over. So thinking about the resources is, 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 uh, is a, a crucial step in this uh, pipeline that we try to develop, yeah. And that's part of what you have in mind when you talk about computational environment? Um, computational environment is uh, that we would like to uh, sort of have a sort of uh, nice environment uh, in which uh, somebody plugs in uh, the type of machine learning algorithm that they would like to do, uh, and our environment uh, robustifies it, right? Make it makes it more robust so that uh, they can they can put uh, in in operations they put uh, our robustified uh, algorithm uh, or their rob their algorithm which is now robustified by our environment. Uh, they put it on, on operations uh, and then um, learn about uh, the types of attacks it's receiving, et cetera, et cetera. So that, that would be the, the, the kind of um, computational environment that, that, that we would like to do. Yeah. So okay. rather, rather than, I mean, we have uh, quite a few, let's say, ad hoc uh, algorithms for various, as a, no, we, we have done with uh, I don't know, uh, with uh, binary classifiers. Uh, we have done a, a, a few things with uh, time series models to robust, et cetera. So rather than having like a little ad hoc uh, things, uh, try to put something in a sort of computational environment. In the, in the line of, of these um, um, regulatory sand, sandboxes that the Artificial Intelligence Act is, is uh, asking for. Thanks. Kathy, you're next. Thanks so much, Liz, and thank you, David, for um, a fascinating talk. I, I was watching your examples and I just kept thinking, oh, oh my gosh. Given the cost of data acquisition and the high cost of ensuring the quality of existing data, can data be accidentally adversarial? And where might this sit within a regulatory framework? Okay, so um, um, yeah, uh, actually um, there is, um, I, I didn't have much time, but uh, you, you study, you need to study, uh, I mean, attacks could happen during the training, they actually could happen during the training phase or it could happen during operation. So, uh, and then there's various types of attacks. So basically it's a kind of nightmare, right? Uh, and it could also be, I mean, there's, there's also, I mean, you, you, you must uh, become a, a little bit of a paranoid. There's examples, for example, in, in, in line of what you, Kathy mentioned, there's cases of insider attacks, right? And so there's uh, insiders that are actually, um, uh, somehow control the, the sort of data generating process 
and they try to fool. I mean, you could think of uh, I don't know from a sort of an angry an angry employee, for example, or uh, I don't know some some in, some person who has infiltrated. So there's examples of of that kind of of uh, of uh, of problems. So one one an, an, another area of this is uh, protecting from insiders, right? So all these kind of examples are, and the, what the um, of the second the second part of your of your question, um, uh, this is actually, for example, contemplated in the in the in the um, in this artificial intelligence act from a regulator regulatory point of view. These sandboxes that I mentioned, what they would allow you is to uh, well, you de you you develop this um, this um, algorithm for whatever purpose you want. Uh, um, for whatever ethical purpose you want, uh, and uh, um, in this environment, you you could try uh, you would try uh, this uh, uh, algorithm in a sort of uh, a safe uh, a safe uh, environment. Uh, you would try it uh, uh, um, in face of this kind of attacks, right? So that that would be part of the sort of environment that. Uh, uh, I mentioned uh, when 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 answering to to Fred Roberts. Yeah. Wonderful, Alexis. Talker, uh, just to go ahead with Kathy's uh, question, uh, you should know that uh, people working in the big data, let's say, environment. Uh, are now considering the problem of what they call the data pipeline quality. Uh, you see data are collected, are stored, are transmitted, are elaborated, are recollected, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. No? So this is a pipeline and there is a general problem yeah. of data of data quality on, on the whole pipeline. Yeah. Now, some of the things that could happen on the data could have, uh, uh, could be of strategic origin in mean in the sense that there is somebody that deliberately wants to modify them, but the other ones are random. They can occur because something happens, a drop mm. of rain, uh, uh, a mouse that eats a piece of cable uh, or whatever. No, uh, mm -hmm. So the idea of having something which is robust has to do in both cases, but uh, you have something which is unknown, but the origin is different. In one case, there is a deliberate yeah. willingness of modifying the data, and the other one is mm -hmm. totally random, okay? So this is why you specify that there is an adversarial willingness to modify uh, data. Now, I have a question for David. In the past, uh, part of this, uh, let's see, adversarial uh, uh, work, has been done using Stackelberg games uh, because Stackelberg games allow to force the adversary in a certain type of behavior. No, uh, why? Why you don't like that? Let, let me ask it in a very. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's not a matter of. <laughs> you understand my question. Where, where, where... <laughs> were, 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 were you the re reviewer of one of my last papers? So <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no, no. <laughs> it's not me. He, he or she asked me this. Yeah, he or she the asked same me question. The same thing. So, <laughs> yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, uh, uh, Zuckerberg, um, uh, Zuckerberg, um, uh, I mean, in the Stackelberg, Stackelberg the, the leader still needs to uh, know quite a lot from the from the follower, right? Um, so if it's a defend attack, uh, def a sequential defend attack, the defender would need to know a lot about too much about the attack. And if if you try to remove this, uh, you end up with a base Nash equilibria. Uh, but this uh, basically requires um, um, uh, so the, the the sort of uh, common prior so there's still some some common knowledge which is uh, doubtful I, from my point of view which is doubtful in a security domain so that's why we try to 
So that's what we try to, to do this. We, which is, your main criticism I, I think, is, is common knowledge. To... Sorry? The main criticism remains common knowledge. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is, okay. which is uh, debatable in security. Uh, and, and it's also uh, difficult to, to sell among many reviewers and <laughs> referees. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I should say that the solutions are different. Um, so the concept is different. It's, yeah. All right, do we have any other questions? Any last question? Because otherwise we are at time. Ned, I see you on mute. Yeah, I'm gonna ask a question, but I just wanna preface it by saying that um, a, lot of, a lot of your presentation I didn't understand, but I, I was really, surprised by a lot of the examples. I just wonder if you could talk a little bit about um, backdoors. And I saw a paper recently talking about the issue of backdoors, machine backdoors in machine learning models as a risk for um, you know, secondary users of those machine learning models. It, could, could you repeat? Um, sorry, uh, my English is not so uh, Backdoors in, in machine learning models. So when a machine learning is created and has some sort of Backdoor, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, just yeah. just to explain some of the risks with that, and um, and your yeah, you know, that was something new to me, and I was interested in uh, in your perspective on that as how significant a threat that is. Yeah, uh, that's uh, pretty recent. Uh, so so as I said, uh, there is a, a sort of a permanent uh, discovery of uh, new types of attacks, uh, and that's uh, that's. Um, uh, that's recent on uh, that's a sort of um, uh, based on the training you you can create uh, on, on, I mean things that uh, um, um, how do you say um, you, you, you I mean the the, the algorithm um, classifies correctly or predicts correctly etc but it's it it has some backdoors that can be actually used uh, eventually by by the bad by by the bad guys uh, to uh, so uh, you could think of somebody selling commercially a classifier and you buy it, but then you have this uh, kind of backdoor um, and, and that's a very tough problem also, yeah. But as I said, the, the, it's a, this is a sort of permanent uh, arms race and people are discovering every, well, not every day, but uh, you, we, are getting, we are getting attacks, all types of attacks. Uh, Permanently, etc. So it's um, it's quite tough. Yeah. Okay. And, and apologize for not having explained very well. Sorry. I understand it better than I did before. So thank you. <laughs> thank you. All right. Well, we are at time. Are there any final burning questions? If not. I'm just giving the time, you know, the pause you have to give in Zoom. If not, thank you so much for your talk, David. We really appreciated you joining us today. Thank you. We really, really did. Um, it was a privilege. And I, the only thing I want to do to close the evening is just tell you a little bit about the program tomorrow. Um, so okay. if it's all right, I'll just share a screen very quickly. All right, so this is tomorrow's program, Friday's program. We will, this is the last day of- You're on your notes, just in case. Oh, whoops. It switched on me. Sorry about that. And switched again. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for that, Catherine. Um, okay, so tomorrow is the last day of SRA 22. Um, it will feature a case study on social responsibility at scale. Um, this is a case study in collaboration with the Commonwealth Bank of Australia. Um, we will have a session covering, looking at all of the case studies we've had this week, looking at challenges and opportunities that have arisen out of the, the work we've been doing together. And we will have a keynote talk on fairness on online labor markets by Siham Amir Yahya. So with that, we really look forward to seeing you tomorrow. And in the meantime, please have a wonderful day, afternoon, or night, whatever time it is for you. Thank you all so much. <laughs>